Now, ladies and gentlemen, our show begins today with a very special demonstration by a talented Pat Pirelli of Clements, California. The Pirelli Horse Ranch, better known as the Foundation Station, teaches the young horses to learn how to learn, learn how to give, and to learn people sense. They do not break horses at that ranch, but they give them the ability to understand their owners or trainers, one of them. Now, now we'll meet the man who gives them this foundation. That's Pat Pirelli right there on horseback, riding Sparky the Wonder Horse. Now, Pat is better known for his bridalist demonstrations on his mule named Thumper. They've been invited to the 1984 Olympics, and Pat has been featured in several horse magazines, produced several commercial videos on problem solving, and holds clinics year-round for both horse and rider. Pat is appearing here daily and will be giving various demonstrations on ground schooling, proper restraint, problem solving, herd psychology, and interaction. He will also give a bridalist demonstration some days with a stallion Fresno Salty Dock on various days. So, with that, I'm going to turn over the microphone here in a second, but uh, Pat, I think, today is going to be doing a little horse psychology. He's got a horse that has some problems. It's an older horse that's been ridden, but apparently it rears and does a little bucking for its owner. So, Pat's decided he's going to psychoanalyze this horse. Now, we were going to bring in a couch, but he figured that maybe the horse wouldn't stay on it very long, so we forgot that part. So, we'll see what he does today. Thank you, Pat. Thank you very much, Dave. Good afternoon. If you move up just a little, Pat, we'll we'll get rid of this uh, noise level and they'll hear you better. A little closer? A little farther away. Get a little closer to the folks there. You bet. There you go. Good afternoon. I would, I would, I would bet everyone here has thought about the horse one time or another. And I'll bet we've, in those thoughts, we've had a dream. A dream of becoming united and having a harmonious relationship with the horse. This is what I'd like to present, is an attitude that will take you steps closer to realizing your dreams. This attitude is paraphrased horsemanship. Think of that word, if you would, horsemanship. A horse said first due to respect, a man, a human. A horse and a human, and a ship is a vessel within which to travel, so a horse, man, horse and a human traveling somewhere willingly together. So, <clears throat> I'm sure there's a lot of other things that we'd, you know, a lot of us take an attempt at marriage once in a while. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Well, this is a unique marriage here between the horse and the human. The horse is plenty willing. <clears throat> he just often is misunderstood. You notice they never say for understood? Misunderstood. That's a little joke. But, We'll try to work with the horse here and try to understand him. And any horse, no matter what the, what the situation is, see, there are no problems. There are no problems. There are only situations that have, that are in need of solutions. So we won't even label them as a problem. So no matter what the situation is, it takes three things, respect, impulsion, and flexion. <clears throat> so we're gonna psychoanalyze this filly and see what the situation is. I'll go through and work with her a little bit, explain as I'm going along. I'll saddle her. And I'll go as far as I can in this 30-minute demonstration. So I'm going to get started here. First of all, I want to check and see what she thinks about having different things come at her here. See, she's got this right eye she's looking at me out of. Now, she's a binocular-visioned animal or bilateral vision. She sees differently out of this eye than she does that eye. We are binocular in our vision. We see one vision out of both eyes at the same time. But she sees me different out of each, and so I'm going to check her out and see what she thinks here. I'm going to see what she thinks about having the human approach her as though I was flying down on top of her here. And she tells me that bothers her. So I'm going to work with her here and see if I can't let her absorb some of this. We'll call this psycho-cybernetics. Maybe some of you have been lucky enough to read that book. It's called just practicing in the mind. <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can turn my partner here loose. He does a better job for me if I'll just let him go and do his own thing here. See if he can help me here. These horses, you watch my little horse here work a little bit. It doesn't take this bit or this bridle to get this horse to work. He's my partner. He knows just what I want, when I want it, where I want it. <clears throat> he says we can communicate. See, I don't speak English, and he doesn't win. Or let's say it the other way. <laughs> he doesn't speak English, and I don't win. to make any sense to each other. 
But if we can understand each other's body language, I'm sure we can communicate. I'm sure we can communicate. Now what I'm looking for here is to check this mare out on this side. I'm going to reach in here and kind of touch her with my foot here once in a while, see if I can check her out and let her check me out. And at the same time, I'm trying to see if I can get her hindquarters loosened up. See, it's the hindquarters of the horse is where the drive and the direction and the power is. And this is what we have to control. See, I'll show you a little something. When I operate my horse here, he's just like a boat. You, you think about the next time you're in a boat. When you're steering a boat, if you can make the hindquarters go over there, look what happens to the front end. See? I can get that over there. If I can get his hindquarters over there, see how I can get his, see I can get that over there like that? That's all it takes. Is to be able to control the hindquarters of that horse, you control that whole horse. These steering wheel, this little thing up here we think is a steering wheel, it steers all right, but just like a boat. You steer it up here, but it controls that back there. So, the first thing I want to do is get control of my horse's hindquarters. I'm going to use the mechanisms up front, but I want you to understand that it's the hindquarters we need to control. <clears throat> so I'm going to move her around here just a little bit. Check her out. See, now this doesn't seem to bother here. Let me allow me here to touch her, pet her ears. This is looking better. I'll see if I can insert my fingers in her mouth. If you can see that there. So I go along and insert my fingers in her mouth and let her taste me. Sense me, feel me, smell me, anything. Whatever it takes for her to feel confident that I'm okay, that I'm not a predator. Okay, let's see how well she follows. Most horses don't follow very well. They're just broke to drag, see? And a lot of people, they'll say, I'm going to break my horse to lead. Well, that's the worst thing you can do. Never break your horse to lead. Don't teach him to lead. Teach him how to follow. We as humans they need to take classes in how to be good leaders and how to lead. They need to learn how to follow. There, she's kind of taken off there with me. Good, there we go. I want her to follow that suggestion of when I'm about to go, when I'm about to slow. There we go. There, looking pretty good over here, Bruce. There we go. Okay, when we bring that saddle in, I'm gonna start saddling her here now. See what she does with her, with her posture. She'll lick her lips here a little bit. See her lick her lips, drop her neck. She's starting to tell me these are body language signs. That she's starting to relax, everything's okay. See her licking her lips there. She's digesting the thought. Let's see what we've got here. Just anywhere is fine there. Now I'm gonna see what it takes to saddle this mare. I'll keep a hold of blue. There, yeah, thank you. I want to make sure that everything's okay with her, the saddle. That looks good. So check the, same, the, the, the other side out. But when I change sides, I'm not just going to go around there rudely or I'm not going to sneak. I'm going to be polite as I can without being sneaky. So here's how I might do it. I might, say, I might put my hand here like this, and I'll stand here, and I'll tip her across her. She keeps me out of that eye, now out of this eye. See? She's already accepted me, and I haven't moved a foot. And now here I am. These are called tricks of the trade. We'll check her out here. See, make sure that this is okay with her. I'm being polite without being sneaky. But see, first it'll be my rope, then it'll be my pad, then it'll be my saddle, then it'll be my knee. So I'm checking her out to see what she thinks. Okay? We'll go across this side here, polite without being sneaky. I'll check from that eye to that eye. She's already accepting and I've never moved a foot. Okay? Good. This is looking real good here. Let me work with her here just a second. See if I can't cause her to, to, to drop, her, drop her head here away from my hand. Now you notice that big jolt, jump? This is a reaction. My goal is to get horses to respond with respect without fear. The opposite of respond is reaction. The opposite of respect is disrespect. And if you think about that, respond and respect. Horses, as a general rule, don't understand. They have fear of surprise in their action. Therefore, their attitude is one of reaction. See if we can get Blue to understand here. I would like him out of, out of our space here a little bit. I want him close. There we go. There we go. Now she's starting to accept. 
there, there. When her head goes down an inch, I'm gonna let my hand come up. There, my hand will come up and I'll pet her here. And let's see pretty soon. My hand, my hand will go up when her head comes down. I'll pet her here, I'll pet her here, here. I'm looking for actions on her part that represent her attitude, good or bad. There, there we go. All the way down, okay? Thank you. These are little things, but a friend of mine told me once that it might be a little thing, it might be a little difference, but it's the difference that'll make the difference. See there, now I can... Working with these horses is about like training field mice to jump in grain sacks. It's really simple. If you, if you kind of have an idea of how to go about it, but just your attitude more than anything. So I want to check her out here. I want her to be polite without being sneaky, see? I'm not going to sneak this thing up here, I'm gonna, but I'm not going to wang her with it either. I'm going to be polite without being sneaky. Check her out here, see what she thinks. There we go. There we go. That bothers her there a little bit. See if we can get through that other side there. Polite without being sneaky. There, he's accepted me. There, he's accepting. He's accepting. This is good. Now, if the horse has never been ridden, that's just what he is. He's never been ridden. But once we've ridden that horse a little bit, he's accepted us. What color do we call him? Green, that's right. Now, someday, See this horse here, he used to be a green horse, but he got dependable. Now what color do we call him, anybody? How about true blue? You see it in color here. We call him true blue. But now, little horse like this, she was green once, but now what color is she? She's the most common, common color of all. She's evergreen. See, and this is something we want to graduate out of, is this evergreen. We want to check this out with her. I'd like her to become true blue. Little horse I rode last night might indicate another color of a horse. If our dream comes true, once we get beyond this true blue, then we can realize our dream. That color might be solid gold. So I use these little things like this, this little phraseology, to help you with concepts and categories. When I put on a clinic and I'm trying to work with people and horses, I try to teach horses people sense and people horse sense. And it takes categories and concepts. The categories for her, for us to understand about her, are respect, impulsion, inflection. And some of the concepts are these things like these colors that I'm telling you about. Now I'm going to kind of check her out here with this. A little bit here and just see what she does with this saddle. Let her work around here. People said they bought her and didn't watch her ridden. Good. Not too bad. She's got a little kind of a worried look in her eye. But she's starting to soften already. They said she reared a little bit. Come on, Blue. And what I want to do is see how I can control her hindquarters. There. Good girl. See if she lifts her lips for us. There she goes. Check her out and drop that neck. Good. These are signs that she is starting to understand and she's submitting. There, she's a little worried. There, she's a little worried. But I'm not trying to stop her motion. I'm trying to keep it going. She needs to get through that. There we go. There, see the look in her eye? See them lips? These are little things I'm looking for. See your hind quarters over there? Let's watch her drop her neck. Come on, man. There we go. See those signs? 
They're as big as life to me. They don't want to make me look like that to you. But they're just the really big things. There we go. There we go. Let's see what we got here. There we go. Good. Let's see if we can send it off this other way. We use some body language here. See if I can get it to work itself out. There we go. Now, a horse. There we go. See that hind quarter starting to come through? Let's see how she follows up here. With those feet. There we go. There we go. With those feet. Good. These are the things that I'm looking for. She's getting to where that doesn't bother her. They said she had a little problem rearing and bucking. Well, we've seen the bucking. And all the horse has to do, or what the horse has to do to buck or to rear, is spread her hind feet like this. Now watch her right hind go next to her left hind. It'll get narrow. I'll say now when it happens. Now, now, now. That's the timing I'm looking for, and it's called disengagement. If I can cause her feet to do that, then I can keep her from, from rearing. And we do this through something that's called lateral flexion. To bend the horse to the side. Right or left. So let's see what we got here. Maybe we can take a chance. How about you guys? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Should I get on or not? I was afraid you'd say that. Okay. So I'm going to kind of let her go here. I'm not uh, going to predict what she's going to do, good or bad. So it might get a little livelier than what you think. So if it comes your way, precaution yourself and please back yourself up. Yield. For safety's sake, folks, uh, we'd appreciate it if you would not sit on the fence. If you have a child sitting on the fence, it'd be nice to get him back now. Anything can happen in this training. We hope it doesn't, but it could. Please get the children off the fence. Okay. Now, the first thing I've done is I've got her feet in position. They're wide. They're in a wide stance. Next thing I'm going to do is go halfway up. Worst thing you can do is just hop up on a horse and, and assume any horse is going to be all right. So we'll go halfway up. We're going to check it out with her here, see? What she think? And if I had to, I could pull this rein here. And I could hop off or go ahead and hop on. Move this stirrup around here a little bit and get on. Now it's time. That's all there is to it. I've got what's called, what I call a night latch here. Some people call it a foster farm string. Or a chicken. But this is in case. So we just make sure that works. What I want to do is check her out, see if I can bend that head. If I can bend that head, I can control that hindquarters. And I see automatic. She goes right into what she, she used to know, her history. She gets stiff and goes like that. There, there, that's what I was looking for. See that bend? Let's see if we can try it this other side here. Now, I threw that over there, polite, without being sneaky, and there's the bend again. And this is a good indication that it's staying over here a long time, and it's not snapping back. So your liquor lips, kind of dropping that head. Things are getting better for her already. Let her check things out here. There we go. That's good. Now, generally, we do this kind of a, work with this kind of a horse in a, about a 30 to 50 foot round corral so if she got going she wouldn't go too far anyway so if i jump out of the pen someone call the sheriff in the next county for me will you? all right let's see what happens here we'll just kind of let her go it takes respect impulsion and flexion now i'm going to assume that she's respecting me because she doesn't seem to be too afraid i'm just going to ask her to go off i don't really care where she goes but Karen, if you just kind of keep that horse's, why don't you leave him out here in the middle? That way, he keep his hindquarters away from me. That's good. Just let her kind of go here. I'm not going to guide her, I'm just going to ride her. You might excuse yourself now. Kind of excuse yourself there a little bit. There we go. I'm going to let her do her thing. I'm not going to force her into anything. I just let her do her thing. See? We'll do her thing, or my thing, her way at first. Then maybe later on she'll do my thing, her way. We'll see how it goes here. 
The worst thing you can do is if a horse bucks, it's pull on him. So I'll give you a little secret. I used to ride bareback horses and saddle bucks for a living. Now while we're going along here, I'll get in time with her feet. I'm going up and down with her left front foot. I'm not going to guide her anywhere. Please excuse yourself. You can let her go where she wants. Let her do what she wants. We'll kind of kick her up into the canter here. Now we got what's called the right lead at this point. Now we'll get the left lead. And just kind of let her go. And she's going long. See, I'm just going to pet her here. And just let her know everything is all right. She's getting a little scared there. It's okay. Let her do what she wants. See what the woman does is react. They do this, see? As soon as the horse goes a little bit, we want them to go. If we couldn't get horses to go, we'd have never filmed the movie Bonanza. <laughs> Going is where it's at. We're going to let her kind of come down to a trot here. There we go. I need to make a little adjustment here on this halter. Well, not that big of an adjustment. We'll see what happens here. But this is the way you realize your dream, see? This is a dream. This is like getting on a dolphin and riding something. It's wild. It's just free. You go where it goes. I got goosebumps right now. I'm alive. This feels good. See if I can let her trot. I'm going to take the light out. I'm just going to relax. See if I can let it come down to a walk. Now let's stop. Give her a hand, folks. She's doing, she's trying to adjust that for you. Now I've never seen these horses that I work with before, to, just before these demonstrations. So I'll work with them here. Let's see if I can teach her here to slow these feet down. Let's see if I can even back her up here a little bit. There we go. Almost. I'm trying to get her to understand. I'm not trying to train her. I just want to communicate. There's an my dream is to get regular people like us to get extraordinary results with ordinary equipment. You don't have to go to the store and buy a bigger bit. There's a little backup. There you go. How do you like that, folks? She's starting to understand. <clears throat> Takes attitude, feel, timing, and balance. Isn't that nice? This is a horse that had trouble with the human. Let's see what we can do here a little bit. And if all else fails, jump off. I missed my little pocket farm string there. Let's see if we can start that over again. Give her a hand. That's one for her. She's all right. She don't mean no harm. She's just trying, trying to survive. She's just trying to survive. But I made a pact with the horse. He's gonna buck. I ain't gonna pull on his head and make him frightful. I try to help her there and ride with her. If I was a little better rider, I'd just go right with her there. Of course, if I had a road ride, I'd, still be, I'd probably still be trying to make a living riding button horses. Let's give her a try again. What do you think, sweetheart? Let's give it a whirl. She looked at me and she said, are you sure? Okay. Because if we can bend that head to the left, there we go. Pop it over the other way. Bend it to the right. That's good. The hardest thing for us humans is to stay in control. And I don't mean just staying in control like they're riding that horse and she's bucking, but I mean to not get mad and upset. Just smile on and go. What difference does it make? I get, I'll bet you that ain't the last time I get bucked off. I got 18 or 15 more days of this. Let's see if we can help her here a little bit. Again, what I'm trying to do, teach her 
Go this way here. There we go. There we go. You're all right. You're all right. There we go. Let's see you try it again. There we go. Just communicate with her. Hands a little that way. There's a little that way. There's a little bit. Just try a little bit that way. We'll try to trust her here a little bit. See what she does here. We know she can love her. There we go. Now we've got it kind of going that way. Now I'll show you a little trick here. If I just use one rein like that, I can control her, her feet like I got her canner here. If I'll just hit her nose a little bit, her hindquarters has got to go the other way. And that gives me a trot. Pretty soon I got things going the way I want them to. Where else? I'm just trying to communicate with her. She's trying to communicate with me. <laughs> Heads up. There we go. Going here. Where's the lead chain? <laughs> Let's see what we do here. Get a trot and now pick up the left lead. There we go. But this is how I kind of work with the horse. I don't work again. I just kind of get try to get working along there in her mind. Let's see if we just let her kind of come down here. She's just stop out here for some of you folks. Give her the option. She's going to get her. Bend it over this way. Got her in kind of an awkward spot there with that rope, but it's okay. Let's see. I'm going to give her one final little deal here. Let's see if I can massage her neck here and drop it down. Make her feel relaxed without having me up here. Checking me out again. Now, I think I'm going to continue with this mare a little bit tomorrow. So, then you want to come back and watch it again. There we go. She's starting to accept the human. So, my final word is horsemanship. To become a horseman. I am sitting on a horse. I'm a human with a sitting on a horse. But I want you to think of one thing. She has to become the horseman first. Did you see her over there say, no, I don't want a human on my back. I do not want to become a horseman. But she's taking this first step toward becoming a human of understanding and accepting. Thank you very much, folks. I'll see you tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, Pat Pirelli from the Foundation Station in Clemens, California. Another fine demonstration of horse psychology.